A lightning strike on the launch site in a Florida thunderstorm last night gave Columbia a rough and realistic preparation for this final test flight. After this, it must be a commercial vehicle making regular space flights. But the weather steadily improved over the soggy Cape Canaveral site, and all was well when astronauts Ken Mattingly and Harry Hartsfield walked out to begin their seven-day flight in orbit. T-minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine ignition. 4, 3, 2, 1. And we have solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of America's space shuttle on its fourth mission, and we have cleared the tower. As Columbia completed its role, space strategists would ponder the Russians have five men, including a French officer, in space now. And this fourth shuttle flight carries a large and secret military package of experiments. Seconds. Columbia now 21 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 21 nautical miles downrange. Two minutes, three seconds, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. The solid rockets separated correctly, and Columbia went on to achieve orbit safely. Two minutes, fourteen It'll make seconds several orbital changes this flight, separation. and scientists express concern that military objectives are becoming more prominent. Ken Mattingly and Henry Hartsfield are not alone. Also in space are five men aboard Russia's space station. Red Tunnel reports. And Columbia's fourth crew, now on their 18th orbit, are just starting on experiments to produce very pure medicines in weightless conditions, which it's hoped will one day cure illnesses like diabetes. But once again, Columbia had liftoff troubles. Much more fuel was used than expected in getting into orbit. And just to be on the safe side, she's being kept seven miles lower than planned. That'll make sure there's plenty left for the landing. Worse still, the two solid rocket boosters used to launch Columbia have been lost. They normally parachute into the sea to be towed back for use again. But this time they sank to the bottom. And a new pair will cost 28 million pounds. And there'll be fewer TV pictures from Columbia this time. Space correspondents won't be allowed to know much of what's going on. That's because Columbia is trying out a top-secret infrared telescope for America's future military spy satellites. And in fact, a quarter of all future shuttle flights will be secret military ones. Now for the Russian space flight with five men aboard their space station. It's the first time for nine years that Russia and America have had men in orbit at the same time, but they won't be meeting up. So far as we know, Russia's Soyuz T-6, launched last Thursday, had no trouble docking with the new Salyut 7 space station. And for the first time, a French test pilot was aboard, a spationaut, they call him. reported that the spacecraft is vibrating a bit, but this isn't thought to be dangerous and some of the experiments on board may not be carried out. These first pictures from Columbia's fourth space flight show Ken Mattingly and Henry Harsfield on the flight deck. Experiments that have taken American students years to set up are in a special compartment, but a faulty switch means they can't be turned on. There's also a secret military experiment on Columbia which hasn't been filmed. But the crew did show one project down in the shuttle's hold, it's to make medicines purer than they can be made here on Earth. ...on some of the nine experiments set up by American students. But there's been no news about the secret military experiment or how it's going. Reg Tunnel reports. Coded conversations which we can't understand between Columbia's crew and mission control suggest that first tests of their secret military telescope aren't going too well. Tom Mattingly and Henry Hartsfield have strict instructions to record all their TV tests and bring them back when they land on Sunday. For this drawing is all that even mission control is allowed to know about the telescope. It's a metre long sitting at the back of the payload bay, peering into the Earth's atmosphere. And from there, it should be able to identify instantly both enemy missiles and nuclear bombers, if they're ever launched. At Vandenberg, the secret air force base in California, they're building a new shuttle launch site to send up early warning satellites carrying these telescopes from 1985.
they have to be sent from Vandenberg instead of the Cape because spy satellites must fly round the poles instead of round the equator. But there's a new worry. Russia has already developed the ability to intercept and destroy America's spy satellites. So here's one idea put forward by Boeing to counter that. It's a mini shuttle, with or without an astronaut, which can be launched in minutes from the back of an adapted jumbo jet. Its job will be to intercept anything, a missile or a spacecraft, trying to blow up America's spy satellites. Just as in the missile business, both sides are desperately trying to keep one step ahead in what may develop into a future war in space. That means that the military men are demanding more and more shuttle ships. The door couldn't be made to close properly, and there are fears that it could cause problems on re-entry to Earth. But the problem has been solved, and everything is now running smoothly again. Unless the shuttle is facing directly into the sun, it gets extremely cold. The doors to warp slightly while they were open, as they are during the mission. When an attempt was made to close them, it was found that they wouldn't shut properly. So the astronauts barbecued Columbia, rotating it so all sides faced the sun, like a chicken on a spit, so it would heat up. And that's done the trick. The doors returned to their normal shape and shut. Holidaymakers to watch it touch down at a California air base at the end of its seven-day mission, the last of the proving flights. Our science correspondent David Wilson reports. 126,000 feet, Mach 6.3, range to go 185. On its final test flight, Columbia did an extra orbit of the Earth, officially to give a better test of its landing in crosswinds. But it's widely believed it was really to get the landing and President Reagan watching it onto late breakfast television for Independence Day, the great American holiday. The final swoop down, the last minute lowering of the wheels, and Columbia comes down through the heat haze at Edwards Air Force Base. Gears down and locked. The successful touchdown. But there's increasing worry about the militarization and politicizing of space. There's been some criticism in France of the political nature of the Frenchman taking part in this week's Russian space flight. And there's been widespread adverse comment about the secret military payload aboard this flight of Columbia and the increasing military influence in the shuttle program now that the space shuttle is about to start regular service. They had to clear and clean Columbia before the astronauts could meet the president. But already he'd said today that America will continue a strong space policy to strengthen its security as well as to obtain economic and scientific benefits. Astronauts Mattingly, known as TK, and Hank Hartsfield were soon out of Columbia to be welcomed by President and Mrs. Reagan. They showed some of the outside features of the spacecraft to the president. The president of the United States. As the formal speeches went ahead, at the other end of the airfield, the second shuttle orbiter Challenger took off on the back of a jumbo jet to prepare for the world's first commercial space travel service. Today at the landing, President Ronald Reagan gave NASA, the American Space Agency, a green light for new ventures in space. Reg Turnell reports. It was America's Independence Day, and there were half a million people in the desert to welcome Columbia. A much safer landing on a proper concrete runway this time. Mission control were relieved when the wheels came down. Last time they were lowered dangerously late. The most successful of the four test flights. For the first time, even the toilet worked properly. When astronauts Mattingly and Hartsfield stepped out, President and Mrs. Reagan were there to greet them. They all watched Challenger, the second shuttle just completed, flying off on a jumbo jet to Cape Canaveral. And President Reagan made a speech about America's future in space. The test flights are over. The groundwork has been laid. And now we will move forward to capitalize on the tremendous potential offered by the ultimate frontier of space. The President said, as I reported last week, that one of the shuttle's main jobs will be military defence. But to NASA's delight, he also spoke of the need for a permanent manned presence in space. And that means space stations to match Russia's salute. In fact, 
NASA wants to build an eight-man station looking something like this in about five years' time. Though the president didn't say they could have the money, NASA's confident they will get it before long. But the most urgent job is to simplify the complicated flight deck. It takes astronauts months to learn all the 1,800 switches and toggles, so they're planning to cut most of them out and make it more like an ordinary jet line. control of the countdown from nine minutes before takeoff. We are go for main engine ignition. Six. We have main engine ignition. Three, two, one, and solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of the first operational space shuttle mission with two satellites on board and the shuttle has cleared the tower. 55 seconds, Columbia now four and a half nautical miles in altitude. Mark one minute, pass through Max Q, still looking good. Uh, standing by now for solid rocket booster separation confirmation. Roger, PC. Two minutes, 15 seconds, confirm solid rocket booster separation. Well, news around space editor Reg Turnell is at launch control and hopefully he's on the line now. Hello, Reg. Hello, John. Is everything still going well? So far, so good. Joel and the comic of the crew has been moving around in bare feet using his toes and saying it's just like having four hands. And Columbia has just passed about 80 kilometers from Russia's value seven. That's had two men aboard for six months, but we don't know yet whether they managed to see each other.